Hello, Kevin Putz here again. Um, I say again because you might have watched the other video I made about um, the quartet concert on which the Miros played my credo for Chamber Music Tulsa. And in this, um, in this little lecture, I will talk about the newer quartet, the one written in the last couple of years, uh, which was commissioned by, by several chamber um, festivals, um, including Chamber Music Tulsa for the Miro Quartet. And this is my fourth string quartet. Um, as I think I said in the other video, the first was called Dark Vigil. It was written for the Ying Quartet in 1999 when I was just finishing um, my doctorate at the Eastman School. And um, that was an important piece for me actually. Um, uh, it was stylistically, I think I felt like I was starting to find myself um, and uh, find the voice uh, of the composer who the people who know my music, I think, would, would associate with, with me. Um, so that was my first. And then uh, there was another piece written for uh, the Miro, of course, that I talked about earlier called Credo, which is probably my most performed chamber piece. Um, and then another short one called Lento Asai, which was written for the Cyprus Quartet, which um, was a reaction to um, a Beethoven quartet um, as part of their call and response program. That's a shorter work. But this, um, this latest quartet, uh, I remember it being uh, a challenge to, to write, as, as a string quartet always is. It's always hard to find out for, for oneself. <laughs> What, what do you want to say? Um, if you know the string quartet repertoire, there's so much uh, old and new. There's so much incredible music. Um, it's rather intimidating. Whereas if, if as a composer you're asked to write a piece for an unusual ensemble, you kind of feel like you're inventing something. Um, and in some ways, the, uh, simply the instruments um, of an ensemble, of a chamber ensemble, if they're unusual, they can they can generate the ideas um, uh, simply in their combination that they will present certain possibilities that maybe uh, no one has, has thought of before. But with the quartet, you know, you've got these four stringed instruments. Um, it almost feels like, well, in, in some ways it's, it's, the, it's the ultimate, the ideal chamber ensemble. It blends perfectly together. It has a wide uh, registral range going down to the cello's lowest note, and of course harmonic. Well, I mean, you can play play notes on the violin that are extremely high, and also play them as harmonics even higher. Um, there are there's a there's a, a timbral cohesion, of course, because they're all stringed instruments. But there's also a lot that can be done um, with interesting techniques, places that the bow is on the string, different kinds of pizzicatos, different kinds of bowing which can create variety um, in the ensemble as well. Of course, they can be extremely virtuosic. They can be soulful and lyrical. They can play richly. They can play with transparency. And the fact that they're facing each other almost feels like an organism, you know, that they're this kind of <laughs> music. They're, they're a single organism that, that moves together. Um, Whereas some other chamber groups may not be quite the case, you know, a piano trio. There's a pianist sort of looking over, looking over the shoulder, and the cellist is looking over his or her shoulder. So it, it's it's the possibilities of, of 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 playing together are are great and exciting. Um, but I started this this piece, um, and I had written a series of reactions to poetry that I love. Um, and I thought it was going fine, but there was just something, you know, I think every composer can, can explain this, uh, this experience, this feeling of kind of feeling like maybe it's not, not the piece that they want to be writing. You know, it just wasn't, I don't know how, how that's determined exactly. I mean, maybe it's considering the last piece you wrote, maybe it's, uh, in light of the last string quartet I wrote, maybe it just didn't feel like the answer to that for me. So, um, and, and there was something a, a little, you know, when you consider all that's going on in the world um, that I wanted to s s maybe 
involve myself with something of more uh, consequence than, than, than those um, kind of illustrations um, that I was writing um, in my first attempt at this commission. So I, I was walking on the street in New York, going, going to an appointment or something, and I, I just thought, you know, what do, what do I really want to, how do I really want this quartet to start? And um, I, had, I had the idea of something incredibly warm and comforting, like a, like a warm blanket, kind of. Um, and I thought it could be in C major. Why not? And, uh, and I thought, I even went as far as to think, well, you know, could I retune, could I have the, the string quartet retune their instruments to a C major chord? Which wouldn't be, I thought, that difficult. I mean, you think of the low, the, 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 the cello strings, for example, which are traditionally tuned. Well, couldn't you take the top two and move them up to... Or the viola is tuned in the same way, but an octave higher, so that would be easy. The violin has a G and an E as its outer open strings. By, by open, I mean that they're not depressed by anything. If you just play the strings without pushing it down anything on the fingerboard. It has these notes, but, but then these, these two in the middle are not part of a C major chord, so maybe they could be retuned. So the whole quartet, at its most resonant, could be, could be this you know, glorious C major harmony. So um, that, that technique is, is not unheard of, the idea of, of retuning um, the instruments uh, in, in unusual ways. Um, Bartok did it, many composers have done it. Uh, it's called scordatura, that's the, the Italian term that, that's used for it. And um, I consulted with uh, the guys in the Miro Quartet and they were all game for it. So I wrote this piece, I started this piece. I'm just gonna tell you a little about this and then I'll get into the actual music. Um, I started with this in mind, and it became one of the most challenging uh, <laughs> projects of, of my life, and I think probably for the quartet as well, um, that the problem with, with doing this, with retuning the instruments, is that the quartet uh, needs to see the, the music in the way that they normally see it. So. If they're used to playing uh, a certain fingering for this note, but the string on which they usually play that note has been tuned lower, um, then if they play the way that they're used to playing, the wrong note will come out. So I, have to, I had to adjust for that in the notation, which, not to go into it too much, is an unbelievably complicated, time-consuming, and for the quartet, very frustrating uh, endeavor. Though they totally, with great nobility and, um, and patience, played the premiere of the piece with this scordatura tuning. Um, my, my, the thought was that it will make the, the quartet resonate in a very different way. Um, and to get into um, a discussion of, of what the piece is really about, uh, I will now describe that to you. D just in, in short, though, um, I rewrote the piece using a standard tuning, which is what you will hear um, here at Chamber Music Tulsa. Uh, it, it's the, it's, the quartet is tuned as it's usually tuned in fifths, and uh, I think the piece works just fine that way. But my original idea was that this sonority of C major would be... Um, like home, almost. It felt like home. In fact, that was the expression of this music that I imagined. I imagined very, very simple um, music with a, a, a sustained C, which would be mostly open strings if, if this quartet was retuned, and so it would ring throughout the hall. And, and then the first violin plays... Very simple kind of homespun melody. Keeps 
repeating through this phrase, sort of cycling through this phrase. And then eventually there's, um, there's a, an answering phrase. Um, sort of painting a picture of the most warm and 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 safe and comfortable that anyone could feel and of course you know when you think of those associations for yourself um, you think uh, well anyway I was reminded of um, you know stories and and photos um, in the news of, of uh, refugee families um, uh, you know Sort of forced out of their countries uh, by the violence there uh, to find find some d definition of, of home um, on foreign shores and you know cramped into boats and and just horrifying horrifying images that um, in my very privileged unbelievably privileged um, life have never experienced um, so of course I thought well. I can, would never uh, uh, try to try to describe that or try to imagine that experience musically. It's not something that I'll ever, hopefully, ever have to to try and experience myself. Um, but maybe the the abstract idea, though, of of feeling um, unmoored and unsettled and as if the ground has shifted under you and um, that stability has has gone away is something that could be um, dealt with as a, as a theme in, in this piece. Um, so, so, yet I call the piece home. And um, the first section is pretty much the way I just played it. Um, very warm and rich. I wanted to make the quartet uh, sound almost like an octet, like there are more of them than there really are. And one of the reasons I I knew that I could do that is because the, the Miro Quartet is, um, prides themselves on, on this, this just big, rich uh, sound that every composer would love to, to uh, you know, be able to uh, count on. And so, so it was really written with them in mind. Um, and that's, that's pretty much what you hear in the first section. And then... What I thought what it could happen was that you gradually, it's like you're gradually moving out, venturing out from this um, stability. And so there's a, a transitional uh, section after the, fir the last time you hear this kind of, you know, homespun kind of phrase. <laughs> like a broken glass or sort of light coming through a glass. Uh, that, that's the kind of sound world. Harmonics and um, uh, harmonics and pizzicatos in the cello and um, a, to a totally different texture from that which we heard in the first part, um, which still has C at the root but it's starting to find its way away from it. And then there's a very uh, kind of aggressive um, agitato kind of phrase. Um. And back to the, back to the first idea. Um, but, but even that phrase, the second one, it begins with C at the root and then sort of fans outwards as if it's moving away from, from its whatever it characterizes as home. Um, that music takes over um, eventually and the middle part of the piece is 
is a very, very fast, um, not something I'm going to attempt to play, but it's um, in 12-8, it's it's the, the tempo marking is dangerously fast at the edge of playability. And again, it's like as different from the first section as possible. That was the, the aim. So it's very fast. Um, the, the quartet plays kind of jaggedly rather than warmly and richly um it's not they're not they don't play together much of the time it's it's polyphonic so in other words you'll hear almost all the time four different voices um the quartet goes through all kinds of different um techniques uh glissandos very rapid glissandos um clustery kind of um plain these kind of things that i heard <laughs> when I was in, very young by Ludoslavsky, the Polish composer whose music I love. Um, uh, and, and those, those, section, those little moments are played um, what we call a ponticello, where the bow is, is on the bridge um, of the instrument in a very silvery, kind of scary, um, buzzy sound, which um, sounds, of course, very different from the richness of the opening again. Um, and uh, anyway, it's, it's the, the, I would say that the middle section of the piece for the listener is supposed to be unstable, <laughs> kind of harrowing, um, and searching for a sense of stability. There are moments when it feels like there will be one. Like this, this, this minor third here kind of feels like maybe it, it could be, you know, something could be catching, which, which, uh, which might give the listener a sense of stability, but it goes away quickly. You know, it sort of erases itself. Um, and so all this fast virtuosic music, which the quartet plays so brilliantly, um, finds its way eventually back to um, the first material that you hear, those melodies at the very opening of the piece. However, um, it's different. It's a, it's, it's a, there's a new definition. It's a, as if, you know, Home, what we thought of as home, no longer exists, and it has to be redefined um, and and accepted as as something new. And I won't um, I won't attempt to to play that um, for you, um, but just to, to say that it's the presentation of this of these melodies um, has over the course of of this middle section become necessarily different from, from the first uh, instance in, in which you hear them. And I would also say that, you know, this idea of a beginning, you know, with like one key area or, or uh, you know, a, a central note and then going somewhere else is not the slightest bit new. Of course, this is like the, the foundation of, of uh, classical music of sonata form where a piece is in one key, you know, it could be C major or could be C minor, and then there are a couple of themes and ideas that are presented in the beginning of the piece, um, and at the end of that presentation, we find ourselves in a new key, usually the dominant or the what we call the relative uh, major to to if, if if the key if the key of the piece is in minor minor key, and then the middle section of the what's often called the development is an exploration which doesn't almost never retur you know, references the key of the piece. It's, it's searching for new territory and essentially trying to get back home to the original key, and, um, which almost always happens in, <laughs> in, uh, in, in music of the 18th century, 19th century. Um, so I'm not doing anything new, but um, I think uh, hopefully the way I um, have presented um, this idea, this, this notion of beginning somewhere with a sense of stability and having that go away and searching for a new definition of what that stability is, uh, I guess is what this piece Home is about. And uh, I hope you enjoy it.